Hello and welcome to this um, video about beliefs in society. Um, I'm going to be taking you through definition of religion in this video. Um, three main definitions. So what is the substantive definition of religion? So if we think about the content of beliefs and the nature of um, religious ideas, it usually involves something that is supernatural. That means outside of, above and beyond what is natural. For example, the magical um, <clears throat> creative power of God who made the universe as found in creation myths such as Christianity's um, Genesis. So, substantive definition is where sociologists define religion based on the content and beliefs of religious ideas. Life after death is another example as um, people believe that they're going to go to the afterlife and that is something that's uh, distinctive or different and unique about religion compared to uh, more rational, everyday, uh, banal or mundane beliefs such as um, you know, life ends when the uh, uh, different organs of our body stop um, doing their job. Um, the problem with this substantive definition is it does exclude some beliefs which don't have supernatural elements. So for example, Buddhism doesn't have the concept of God. Um, so therefore this would exclude um, Buddhism and probably suggests a Western bias because um, it's probably focused on a more Christian um, Western European um, approach to religion which includes the idea of a God. The functional definition, secondly, is looking at what is the role that religion can play in our lives, uh, what does it do for human beings, how does it help us, how does it help us cope with life, how does it help us deal with challenges in life. So social, psychological uh, functions, so socially it brings us together and psychologically it helps us cope um, as individuals, gives us answers to the big questions like what happens when we die? Why do we suffer? Why is there evil? Um, Durkheim, Emil Durkheim, um, is, uh, emphasizes integration, so social integration, the uh, way in which people work together and that they feel close and tightly bonded to each other, um, that they share similar um, levels of um, norms and sense of conscience and right and wrong. And Yinger argues that uh, religion answers big questions for individuals like death, suffering, why do these things happen? So we learn things like death is just another you know, uh, adventure or journey in uh, God's um, you know, creation. And suffering is something that um, ha happens as a result of a test which God creates to um, challenge us to uh, improve our soul and level of spirituality. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of the functional, functional definition? So it's more inclusive than the substantive definition because it uh, can include any form of religious belief like Buddhism which helps us cope with life and brings us together and makes us closer. Um, doesn't have that Western bias, doesn't specify the content of a religion which would make it a religion. So we don't have to have God in there to make it a religion. However, the function of integration is not limited to religion. So if we just define religion um, in terms of integration or psychological functions, we could argue that this again is too vague, wishy-washy and doesn't give us a, a clear definition of religion. 
Lastly, and thirdly, the constructionist definition. So this is influenced by interpretivists and developed by interpretivists. So interpretivists believe that people um, develop and construct meanings um, and that this gives them a way of um, understanding the world around them. And so everyone has individual meanings that uh, shape their perspective on the world and give them a sense of an individual understanding of what the, what, it, what the world is and where their place is in it. So that would mean a very subjective definition of the world uh, and, a, and a subjective definition of religion. In other words, everyone has a different, unique, um, individual perspective on what religion means to them. And that's what interpretivists are interested in. They're interested in the construction of definitions of religion by individuals. So whereas the functional definition um, has a more objective definition of religion, in other words, it would say that you know, if there's a certain number of people uh, gathering, um, if we gather a lot of information about people and uh, gather that information using research, we get reliable data. Um, and we find you know, most people are brought together by religion, not driven apart. Uh, most people um, have psychological benefits from religion, uh, not, not um, disadvantages. Then we'd say, okay, objectively, religion has the features of integration and psychological functions. But the interpretivist approach is much more subjective, so it's going to be impossible to generalise in such a way as the functional definition does. And it would be more interested in just understanding individual definitions and constructions of religion. So there's no universal definition with this one. Um, there's contested definitions of religion. So people disagree over whether Scientology is a religion. It would claim to be a religion. Other people would say Scientology is a cult, uh, that they brainwash people and they're dangerous. Scientologists would say that they're a religion, that they help people form a relationship with God and with creation, and, um, and they have spiritual beliefs. So two different definitions of the same religion. So it means that we can understand how religions can be contested, uh, definitions of religion can be contested, uh, so the interpretivist constructionist approach is quite useful because it helps us understand how there's disagreement um, over what religion means and it probably helps us understand the, the basis of conflict as a result of religion uh, because people don't agree over religion, for example, divisions within Christianity or Islam, Buddhism, um, you therefore find that um, you know people come to uh, clash with each other and uh, are opposed to each other, in opposition to each other and um, butt their heads together and this is all the result of their different constructions or definitions or meanings or interpretations of the same thing, religion um, and God. The problem with this is it is impossible to generalise about religion with this theory. So there is a big weakness to that from the point of view of more scientific approaches like functionalist, positivist uh, approaches who argue that we need to develop general um, patterns uh, based on gathering information and then develop general laws which can predict behaviour which would enable us to therefore um, improve society based on those uh, predictable you know, patterns that we can generate uh, based on our laws. Uh, for example, the law of gravity helps us predict the behaviour of physical objects in the natural world. Um, and in the same way, positivists argue that we should be able to generate um, social laws about behaviour of um, actors in the human social world. So for example, if we can find out the factors that lead to poverty, and we can predict who's going to become poor and why they will become poor, then we could do something to intervene, just as we could intervene if something's fallen to the floor, we can predict uh, an asteroid's going to fall from space onto the Earth. You know, so we can do something to solve social problems with sociological theories based on predictable uh, patterns of behaviour. If we can't agree on a definition of what religion means, and we can't measure it on a, a broader scale, then we're never going to be able to improve 
um, you know, understanding of religion and how it affects human uh, behaviour. So the constructionist definition could be criticised on that basis from a positivist perspective within research and from a functionist perspective in terms of the need to apply general uh, laws. If you have any questions about this video, please do send me an email and um, I look forward to speaking to you.